Hello, and welcome to Case of the Day. I'm Dr. Crowley, and today we're going to discuss a case where a patient came in with a uh, problem called keratoconus. And so that is a abnormality in the cornea in which the cornea becomes an abnormal shape. And so the cornea starts to herniate and bulge in an abnormal way, sort of like a tire blowing out that starts to bulge out where the tire gets thin and so that's where it happens with the cornea. The cornea becomes thin in an area uh, and then it allows that part of the cornea to bulge forward which then causes your vision to blur. So someone who has keratoconus um, they have a irregular astigmatism. So regular astigmatism means your eye is shaped sort of like a football cut in half. It's more rounded in one way and flatter than the other but it's symmetrical. When people have irregular astigmatism then that, is, that, that relationship is then not, not consistent, it's abnormal, so now we have a herniated or bulge in a certain area. So then that makes it difficult for glasses to correct that vision in someone like that because it's not symmetrical astigmatism, which is what almost all cases of astigmatism are. And so this is a unique situation where it's irregular astigmatism. So eventually if the irregular astigmatism gets severe enough, then glasses don't correct a person's vision with keratoconus. Keratoconus is a disease that is a multifactorial uh, etiology, that is we're not sure exactly the cause for keratoconus. Um, there's some evidence that there are some enzymes in the cornea that are sort of activating and thinning a cornea out. There's also an autosomal dominant uh, form of inherited keratoconus. Also, there is a study, I think it's out of Duke University, where a corneal specialist there was had a clinic for all these keratoconus patients, and he was noticing that they're all sitting here rubbing their eyes severely, not just like this, but actually a knuckle in the eye and rubbing it, and he thinks that there's some evidence that trauma, that is chronically rubbing on the eye with your knuckle, causes the cornea to be, to be damaged loses its integrity and then causes the thinning and herniation. So there's multiple factors about keratoconus and how it is caused. Usually it's bilateral, that is it's in both eyes, but there, I've seen a couple of cases where it's only unilateral. Um, and so um, if someone has keratoconus then at the point where the glasses won't correct their vision anymore then what's the next step? So there are now, con you know, contact lenses have been advanced in the beginning, to correct the irregular astigmatism, we had to fit a gas perm or hard type lens over the cornea, so that way it would vault over that herniation and your tears would fill in the gap, and so then it would straighten someone's vision out so they would, could have good vision with a gas perm or hard type contact lens. Uh, sometimes they get uncomfortable because the cornea gets so steep that they become difficult to wear, so now there's some newer generation of lenses where actually there's a soft lens uh, and then in the center, on the periphery and then in the center is a gas perm blended into that soft lens so now you have a more comfortable soft lens on the peripheral part of your eye and then the gas perm in the middle to correct the vision. A plain soft lens doesn't correct astigmatism from keratoconus very well because it drapes over the eye and follows the same uh, structure or curvature of your cornea. Now there are toric lenses which can be used for a while in some cases with irregular astigmatism for keratoconus, but typically, eventually, if the keratoconus progresses, then that's, that doesn't work. What are the other treatments as far as keratoconus goes? Well, uh, one treatment is now, which is brand new and is going to should be recent, should be any time uh, approved by the FDA, is a cross-linking. So basically, we're, you know, the cornea now is is thin and its structure is getting less less strong and so the strength of the textile strength of the cornea is being diminished uh, and so uh, Crosslinking is putting a riboflavin vitamin uh, instilled onto the eye and then a UVA light is then shown on the cornea for about 30 minutes and that has been shown to strengthen the collagen in your cornea and stop the progression of the keratoconus and the studies that have been done look very good and so that's going to be a non-surgical way of correcting 
uh, are stopping the progression of keratoconus. Uh, then you have surgical procedures. One surgical procedure is an intact where a sort of splint is put inside the cornea uh, and that strengthens uh, the cornea or gives it a support like a crutch and helps um, people maintain better vision. And then <clears throat> there are different, then the fourth sort of final thing is, is a corneal transplant where that cornea is tissue in the center part of the cornea is removed and a donor cornea is put in place and then sutured in place. And then there's other procedures where only the, the uh, superficial layers are, are, are added on, which is called DLK. Uh, and then there's also an epikeratoplast, which is where a corneal tissue is put on top of the cornea. And that, is, that has had sort of mixed success. So there's multiple ways of treating keratoconus. The exciting thing is when the FDA finally approves the, the cross-linking because then that is going to help people without surgically doing anything. So if you have any questions about keratoconus or any other thing, you, you can always ask us. You can contact us through the website. If not, may God bless you with healthy eyes and great vision.